Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, episode number 345, Managing Renault's Disease with Testosterone. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Maupin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about hormone replacement therapy for women, which is available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. So my first encounter with Renault's disease probably was 35 years ago, and I used to take a group of high school students to Washington, D.C. for a program called Up Close, where they studied the government and got you know, inside interviews at the White House and the Department of Defense and the FBI and stuff like that. Uh, it can't happen today, can it? Yeah, and no, it's, oh, it's still, it's still going on. It's the uh, Alan J. Ellender Foundation oh. funds it, and it's from all over the nation. Kids go to Washington, D.C., and they get to meet with their congressman or senator, and they get inside presentations at these different agencies. Very cool. Uh, but one of the students that I took in this group uh, on the airplane was really complaining because she had, like, pain in her hands and feet and mm-hmm. because the plane was cold really cool. I found out but her hands were like purple mm-hmm. and she said I have this disease and my hands mm-hmm. go in a very limited period of time from really cold and purpley to like red hot mm-hmm. and and red mm-hmm. hot and she mm-hmm. says and it's a circulatory problem that shows up in the extremities right and it's so, it's a hyperactive um, nervous control of your vessels. I don't know if everybody knows that your blood vessels aren't just sitting there sta- um, uh, stagnant. Well, not really stagnant. Blood's r- running through them, but they're they are actually very very um, adjustable. They swell. They they carry more blood. They can stretch. They can constrict. And that's one of the ways, depending on what your body's demands are. Right. So, so if you need more blood going to your gut, right, then your your vessels going to your gut dilate so that you can bring in more blood, and the vessels to your extremities are going to are going to get smaller, and you're not going to get as much blood to your extremities. So the body automatically redirects the focus for digestion, right, or for flight or fight mechanism. Yes. It's uh, automatic. We don't have to think about it. It does it for us. Okay. It's like a constantly adjusting plumbing system. Okay. The, the, self-adjusting. Yeah, self-adjusting plumbing right. system. But the way it works is um, a blood vessel has nerves that run to it. Mm-hmm. And the nerves say dilate or yeah. they say constrict. So they get the signal from headquarters. Hurry up, slow down. Right, right. I mean, the one thing that we talk about all the time is ED. And one of the ways that that erections happen is by vasodilation. So the blood vessels get bigger. And so bring blood flow to that area Mm -hmm. that you're not really thinking about it going, Oh, I need to have blood flow to that area. Although you might be, but, but basically think about it. Yeah. They think (laughs) about it. But when you're, you don't have that, it's just a natural thing that is. And and as a matter of fact, we were teasing about it before we started the the health cast adolescent children who boys who are going through that developmental stage it's totally automatic and uh, out of their control and it just happens and so uh-huh. you have to explain to them that's normal right you that's know. normal it happens to everybody yeah and it is but <laughs> you always you always add something like that in that's well, always I so taught, interesting i taught school yeah i know kids who were like teased or or because they or because they didn't want to get out of uh, out of their desk to come to the, work on the board, you know, come solve this problem. You know, as a teenage girl, I never once thought about that. I didn't even know that that was, that existed. You know, times have changed. Those girls are much they more knowledgeable it. and active now than they were. The internet be there. Years ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, so it's true. It, yes. I mean, I, I was hired to do a lot of workshops for, for middle school kids mm-hmm. that were dealing with these issues that when I was growing up, we didn't deal with until college. Uh, when my kids were growing up, they didn't deal with until high school. Now it's down in the middle school. Well, it's better to teach them than to let them figure it out and th- and figure it out wrong. So well, one hopes. Well, in this, let's go back to Renault's disease. So, so basically, it is an overreaction of your nervous system, sending messages to your uh, blood vessels and telling them to overreact. Mm-hmm. So, um, 
they actually constrict really hard and the blood vessels to your hands and feet, which are the farthest areas away from your yeah. heart. Um, they get locked out. They get locked out. So yeah. the, the vessels go like this. Mm -hmm. And so no blood flow is flowing to your hands. So when that happens, blood is what keeps us warm. Part of what keeps us warm and, uh, the heat going to your hands and feet decreases. So your hands initially get white. Well, I was going to say, how do you know the difference? Cause like my wife has cold hands a lot, or mm -hmm. she did until she got a thyroid medicine. Right. So her regulator was off and, mm -hmm. and her hands and feet were ice cold, but they weren't purpley. Right. And Renault, and they didn't have the aftermath of having after the constriction. Then there's an overreaction of dilation of the blood vessels, which is makes your hands red. So they go from white blue when they they don't have enough oxygen does to it red. Over dilate to bring the oxygen and bring the yeah. the blood, the life giving substance, mm -hmm. so that the, you don't get like gangrene or something. Right, no. right. So so it, it fixes itself, but if it, it can be uh, triggered by cold and it can be triggered by stress. So if you have ongoing severe stress and you have Renaud's, you may have ongoing severe uh, uh, constriction of your blood vessels, and that's really bad for your hands and feet because that can cause uh, death to the tissues, right. which is gangrene. So for for those of us who watch people who have this, we, we need to treat them, right. basically. So we need to figure out a way to treat them with something that's going to either stop the vasoconstriction or increase the vasodilation and stop that so overreaction. You can override with medications yes. the signaling from the nerves. Right. Right. And okay. and that's so the first thing is medications and and the the last thing would be if somebody had severe Renaud's they actually have to have the part of their vagus nerve that comes that that's one of your cranial nerves, part of the vagus nerve that goes to your extremities cut, which is is dangerous in many ways. So where would they cut that up, up at the top? Up at neck. But it would be to limit messaging to the feet and to the hands. And to the hands. The hand, yeah, the hands for the the neck for the hands and. I don't know where they cut. I don't know how they do. Flex. I'm sorry. I just I'm curious. Like, do they honestly? Have to go I did never. I never asked. To find the vagus nerve there. I does don't, it go I, there? Yes, but I don't yeah, know don't how know. that works. Okay. Right. And I'm sorry, I'm not a neurosurgeon. No, 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 no. But um, or or any I'm other any kind of surgeon, surgeon anymore. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but we know how this this responds, and we know what makes it bad. What makes it better is always being warm, wearing gloves, mm -hmm. wearing socks, always wearing sweaters, keeping your whole body warm helps your hands stay warm. Does it come in degrees of severity? Does oh, yeah. Does it have to do with like how much stress you're under or what the temperatures are? Well, it's different or... between people. Not everybody, it, I mean, some people just notice that their hands turn white, then slightly blue. People notice it and say, well, that's kind of weird. And then they turn, and then they turn red, but they don't have the pain. Some okay, people so have the pain. Hands and feet for Renault's. Right. But when I was in college, I was on the debate team, and we could always tell one of the girls... Her, her facial texture and her neck and her up, whatever we could see of her mm -hmm. upper chest would get really splotchy whenever she was stressed out in mm -hmm. the debate. If you were scoring points on her and she didn't know what to do, or if she was feeling stressed out about being able to respond to what you had said, you could just see her. It's a, it's her a body res becomes mottled. Yeah, and it's a response. It's a it's a vascular response to stress. Yeah, it works a little okay. differently. It's the same kind of thing. Same same idea. Okay. Yeah, same idea, but not the same problem or same disease. And it doesn't. Your face doesn't. Fall. We used to stress. Your face her out doesn't just, fall off. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't die off. I hard to believe that yeah. we used to stress her out just to see her. I go bet you did. Splotchy. I'm I'm gonna get splotchy here right right now. <laughs> Sorry, I'll leave you alone. Sorry. <laughs> Let's go back to. Time. Okay, so when I was yeah. in medical school and we first learned about this, we were learning like many many uh, diagnoses every day, and so we have mnemonics, how uh, different ways of remembering diseases. So this was the way we remembered this was patriotic hands because the red, white, and blue. That was our kind of mnemonic for Renaud's. The only and one I, I remember is Roy G. Biv, the color wheel. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> but we had them too. Uh, yeah, every, yeah, yeah every, most, yeah. Most people have ways to remember things that you normally wouldn't remember. And this is the guy's name. So, yeah. so in any case, one of the ways we treat this is we treat, treat it with 
blood pressure medicine, certain types of blood pressure medicine called calcium channel blockers and, and uh, the alpha um, dilators. So basically, they decrease the, the, um, the constriction, they increase the dilation. Mm -hmm. There are also some uh, blood pressure medicines that are dilators of all the blood vessels like Cozar. And it dilates blood vessels. That's how it works. It dilates your blood vessels and your blood pressure comes down. But you can't give them Cozar unless, if they have low blood pressure. Right. So if you already have low blood pressure and you have Renaud's, right. it's really hard to treat because most of the things we use are blood pressure medications. Mm -hmm. And then your blood pressure gets really low. We can't give you much to increase it. So that makes our treatment a little bit more difficult. Other standard treatments... Um, are to take you off something called a beta blocker, another blood pressure medicine. Right. But beta blockers make this worse. So I take a beta blocker for an arrhythmia. So if I had Renaud's, that would make my Renaud's worse. Okay. But sometimes you have to decide which is more important. Right. Now, I don't have this illness, but I don't have Renaud's, but that's what we have to decide with patients, which is which sure. is better, which is worse. But in in treating people with testosterone over the last 15 years, I found that the weirdest thing is that many people with Renaud's get better. And part of that has to do with testosterone not being a real true vasodilator, but it allows the blood vessels to dilate more. It doesn't, it, they, you're not so hyper reactive to stress. Mm -hmm. And as you, as you know, or you may not know, Renaud's gets worse as we get older. And one of the reasons is that we don't have as much testosterone. Okay. So, so one, so I found that when I had people coming in who had Renaud's, but they came to me for, for a different reason, they had other complaints, that their Renaud's got better. Mm -hmm. And that makes sense because Renaud's also is made worse if you have a lot of inflammation. Like if you have an autoimmune disease where you're, right. you're, you have inflammation in your tissues, you're, you're attacking your own tissues, that's an autoimmune disease. That's one of the things that I was telling somebody the other day, I've really learned working with you over these last several months because we've done a number of, of health casts on the issue of uh, inflammation in the body mm -hmm. and how it exacerbates almost every illness that you have. And it makes and you old. It, makes you, it. it right. ages you. And so part of the strategies of ongoing good health is managing the amount of inflammation that you mm -hmm. experience. And right. testosterone helps reduce inflammation. It does. We watch CRP, which is a measure of inflammation, just drop mm -hmm. when, when we give people testosterone. Now... There are things that we can't combat in terms of inflammation with testosterone, and that's an active infection. If you have right. an infection somewhere that's causing inflammation, then testosterone just doesn't isn't enough to fix that. Uh -huh. So you should have the infection treated with antibiotics or with some other type of treatment. Testosterone will help that along, but it is not the only treatment. So Renault's gets worse as you age, as do so many other things. Mm -hmm. And so... What you're finding is a combination of testosterone plus some of these other medicines can mm -hmm. help the sufferer manage the, the degree or intensity of the suffering. Right. And also, besides giving them testosterone, there's another hormone that does help, and that's what you described about Phyllis earlier, uh -huh. was thyroid. Some people have low thyroid, which makes your, your extremities cold for a different reason, which then stimulates the Renaud's to be worse. So I used to make her you have socks to balance. To <laughs> I don't have to do any more, but well, I used to make, I mean, yeah. her feet were like blocks of ice. Right. I mean, it is, it, without, without thyroid, you have, you are colder, your, your body temperature, your basal temperature inside is colder. Mm -hmm. So your extremities are a lot colder. And if you have Renaud's, that's the trigger. So that makes it much worse. So we try to fix thyroid, replace mm -hmm. thyroid, replace testosterone and, and those two things usually will decrease the severity of the Renaud's. Mm -hmm. We leave the treating with um, blood pressure medication to the neurologists and to the internal medicine so, doctors. So in our preparation for this, there were a number of drugs that you explained to me that I'd like to talk about briefly. Okay. If I can. Nitroglycerin. What does nitroglycerin? I've always heard about it as a pill you put on your tongue if you have a, a, a heart a right. fear of a heart attack. So, so what does it do? So nitroglycerin is um, is a vasodilator. That's how it works. So it increases... So it does the constriction around your heart. Yeah, so works. if you have narrowed blood vessels from plaque, yeah. and you're having trouble getting the blood through those vessels to the heart muscle, 
then when you take nitro, put it under your tongue, it is a very fast vasodilator. So it dilates the blood vessels of the heart, also dilates the blood vessels of your hands. So it forces them open against the plaque. Yeah, it forces them open or kind of around the plaque. The plaque's okay. on the inside. Yeah. Plaque narrows the hole. Right. But the, the area with plaque usually doesn't stretch very well, mm -hmm. but the rest can, can stretch. stretch. So the blood can go out. And there's right. enough blood that can go through the blood vessels to, to treat the muscle so it doesn't lose oxygen. So That's I, how you have a heart attack. I saw a video one time of Michael DeBakey doing surgery mm -hmm. and heart surgery, and he cut this artery, and, and then he took a pair of forceps and pulled like a long segment of goo out of the heart. That's plaque. And the blood vessel then started spurting yeah. away. he took the plug out. Okay. So are there medicines that can help reduce that? That you, One of the ones you mentioned was the Neo... Neo40 Neo is, a, is a... Works um, on the same kind of uh, chemical is released when you use Neo40. It's released all over your body. It's nitric oxide. So nitric oxide is the chemical that that um, nitro is, and it, when it goes to your heart, it stimulates the blood vessels. Does like nitroglycerin. Right. Nitrous oxide is in the same category, family. Right, right. And then when we use um, Neo40, you, it's an oral way. It doesn't cause you the side effects of nitroglycerin, but it does dilate all your blood vessels, and it helps the plaque dissolve. Does it help with erections? Yes, it does. For the same reason? Yes, but you have to, you know, if you have problems with erections and we've given you testosterone, then, and you've gotten as, as healthy as you better can on testosterone, blood better yeah. blood flow everywhere, but it's not enough, then we use Neo40 for three months, and that should do it. If that not, then we have Viagra and Cialis, but... Those well, two work on the same basis. That's what I was asking. Because those you, you those increase nitric, nitric oxide. Nitroglycerin cream oxide. around the base of the yeah, fingers. Yeah, you can put the cream, instead of like putting, nit we used to use nitroglycerin over the heart, uh -huh. but you can put it, under, you put it under your tongue. But this cream, you put between your fingers if you have Renaud's, and that dilates the blood vessels at the end of your fingers. So your hands don't hurt as badly. Right, right. And, and then the things like uh, Neo40 or Viagra, Prozac, Prozac also? Prozac, but I don't understand. I I don't think anyone understands how Prozac works for Renaud's, but they give it well, and it works it probably, somewhat. It reduces stress. It calms well, you down. It puts the floor and the ceiling under yeah. what you're feeling. Uh -huh. uh, so that so would my be, guess is that would be the connection. But so I instead of working medical. right at the tissue level, you're working at the brain level. Yeah, I think. Yeah, so that would make more sense. But, using, but they use nitro cream. They use nitro. They even use... They can use nitroglycerin, although that drops your blood pressure okay. uh, a great deal. But that, and now they're, for Renaud's, they're giving Viagra, low-dose Viagra. But, for, but Viagra, so that, so that the blood vessels are always slightly dilated. They're not going to completely close and give you a severe attack. Well, I take Viagra not for sex, uh, but just for general degrees of comfort. <laughs> just so you, well, if you have... This disease, you're taking yeah. it for a disease. Exactly. And I was trying to be funny, but realistically, as you said, people that suffer from this in their, their childhood or their youth, as they age, it gets more mm -hmm. severe and more painful and more disruptive. Mm -hmm. And so the testosterone being the, the, the first domino in the aging cascade, it, goes and away. it starts to go away, then all of the effects of that are exacerbated. Right. And if you replace the testosterone, then that lets your body work more efficiently and mm -hmm. get your blood flow better, which reduces your inflammation, which helps with stress management, and which helps with blood circulation. It also increases nitric oxide in all of your tissues. And if, you, if that's not enough, mm -hmm. then you complement that with these drugs like nitroglycerin, Neo40, right. Viagra. And we take the people, or we ask them to go to their doctors to come off the medications, if they can, right. that are making the, uh, the Renaud's worse. So there's hope for managing Renaud's at the time that it becomes more severe and more painful for you if you are a, uh, a hormone replacement patient. patient. And then these other things can be done as well. And I think the other thing to note is that testosterone pellets or, in, or injections for men yeah. work much better than any other type of testosterone for these uh, illnesses. Yeah, you don't want to get your like testosterone diseases. cream and your nitroglycerin cream mixed up. <laughs> well, no, but but that's yeah, you get hairy hands. So um, that's that's really one of those. <laughs> that's 
Don't listen to him. <laughs> In any case, um, we do look for things that get better with uh, our treatments, and we do then go look for the backup in research, and there is backup on this. Just checking my so, notes here before yes. you run away. Tell me about fish oil. <laughs> what, how does that help? Fish oil is decreases clotting, okay? So when if you take fish oil, you're going to bruise more easily. It decreases the clotting of the blood, and it makes the platelets not coagulate quite so, so how does that play effectively. into constriction? Well, if you have... If you are an easy clotter, you have clots actually build plaque. Yeah. So if you clot, then make plaque. Uh, basically, that's that's a thick kind of blood. Okay. And the, it's the thick blood that blocks the vessels. So if your blood is thick and you get a really narrow, uh, right. narrow it vessel, it can't get through. So right. and it's so it's and it's very painful. Yeah. So so that's that's one of those things that they picked up. We usually give aspirin to uh, the baby aspirin, 81 milligrams uh, of aspirin to decrease the clotting. Yeah. So you could take one or both. Both. I mean, fish oil does so many other things for you that it's not a bad thing to it's take anyway. Such an, listening to you talk about these things is such an amazing education about chemistry. Because I we've done health casts where you've talked about things that uh, thicken the or, or increase the clotting and things that decrease the clotting. I mean, you're just doing a juggling act to clotting. get them in Clotting has a lot of things. That, I mean, it's it has 12 factors. You have to go through 12 actual reactions before you make a clot. So there's a lot of places that medicine and food interact with this clotting profile. So like that's Kenalog. Kenalog, Kenalog, Kenalog's not about clotting. Not about that's clotting. that's a steroid. Okay. And it's an anti-inflammatory. All steroids are anti-inflammatories. Okay. But Kenalog and clotting, we don't use that for. No. To decrease clotting. I think you should to decrease it. bleeding. Kenalog, we use to decrease scar. Oh, interesting. So okay. that's what we were decreasing we, with, with some of our patients that make keloids mm -hmm. or really thick scars. When we put the pellets in, it's only two millimeters. You're not supposed to make a scar. With two millimeters. Small, see, yeah. So uh, if they do, then that's an overreaction of their fibroblasts. So we, when we give them their pellets, we give them just a tiny bit of Kenalog in the incision so they don't make a big scar. Totally off subject. I didn't mean to take you there. That's but, okay. But I'm amazed that you can always just come up with that stuff. <laughs> I better. I yeah. mean, this is what that's, I do. It is your job. Yeah, it yeah. is. <laughs> All right. Well, if you suffer from renosis disease, hopefully this will give you some information that can be helpful as you consider what is the right treatment for you as you age. Thank you for listening. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.